Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. I get asked loads of times what tanks I think are OP or broken. And most of the time people are annoyed with my response. Now let me set a little bit of background for you first. Almost every single YouTuber has done a video at some point claiming a tank to be OP or broken. YouTube is literally filled with such videos and if I'm being perfectly honest, I do have an issue with such terminology. Don't get me wrong, I don't have an issue with the content creator, but the terminology that is used, that is what gets my goat, as they say. But why does it get my goat? I hear you ask. Well, the simple answer is that I don't believe that any single tank is OP in this game. When I think of the term OP, I think along the lines of Rey in Star Wars. Instantly skilled at everything, never at risk of losing, doesn't need or require any training or knowledge, and is literally indestructible. That for me is what OP is. It is something that doesn't require any skill or knowledge to use and it never puts you at risk of getting wrecked. Now when you look at it like that then there really is no tank in this game that is truly OP. Of course there are certainly powerful and strong tanks but powerful and strong is not OP. They still require skill and knowledge to actually do well in them. So why do I have an issue with this term OP? Well, words are a very powerful tool. And when you claim that something happens to be OP, it sends a message to the player base, especially the, to the newer players, that obtaining such a tank will instantly grant you success back to Ray. Now this is simply not true, not even close. One of the tanks that everybody says is OP is the Smasher. Now I fully accept it's a powerful tank, it's very strong. I have rolled out numerous times in tanks other than a Smasher and I've smashed the damn thing to bits. Same applies to the Annihilator, again a very strong and very powerful tank but I've never found them too difficult to destroy especially if they're being played by an inexperienced player. By claiming a tank is OP, you're sending a message that you really need that tank in your garage in order to win more battles. And that skill is a byproduct, an afterthought, not really necessary. This in turn gives players a false sense of security, thinking that because they're in an OP tank, they can't be touched. And as such, they then start playing and making stupid moves. Then they wonder why they're back in the garage so quickly. I've long argued it's not the tank, but the player that actually makes the tank. The tank just happens to be there. Without the player doing what the player does, the tank is nothing. Just think about all those AFK tanks that you wreck, because they're not indestructible. Okay, okay, I get AFK tanks don't shoot back, but my point is that without the player driving the damn thing, it's just a shed load of pixels, nothing more. If tanks like the Smasher or the Annihilator are truly OP, then seriously, show me a player who has a 100% win rate in those tanks after 100 games, or they are riding high in Diamond League because they only play those tanks. Such players don't exist. And if they don't exist, then by default, the tanks cannot be OP. They are just powerful. I remember when the ATGMs were in the game and I used to watch the likes of His Royal Fatness throwing missiles around the place from insane positions on a map and penning those shots. Now take me, I couldn't get on with the missiles at all. In fact, I hardly get anything with a bloody missile. And the Sheridan is by far my worst tier X tank, stat-wise. Why is that if the ATGMs were so OP? Why is it that I, a noob admittedly, 
have such rubbish stats on the Sheridan when it meant to be OP? Well, it's because the player, as I say, makes all the difference. It really is that simple. Yeah, saying tanks are OP gets views for YouTubers. Of course they do. By using such terms, however, it doesn't really help the game overall. In fact, as I said, I think it does have the opposite effect. To the point where players think they are rolling out in an indestructible tank. And that they really don't need to do much other than point and shoot. Unfortunately, it's a tad more complex than that. Terminology, therefore, is an important thing. And it's a tool that we YouTubers often use, especially in thumbnails, to grab your attention. In itself, there's nothing wrong with this. When you consider the bigger picture, everything, my friends, has a consequence. Let us take, for example, the recent 50TP clan event, which is still ongoing. This was something that Wargaming intended to be more difficult than it actually turned out to be. The concept is truly fantastic, but the actual execution failed terribly. It didn't fail because it's actually rather easy to get your paws on this tier 9 tanky, but because of the impact it's had on the game. In many respects, these things were not lost on some of the bigger YouTubers, and a little spat arose between two of the biggest. One claiming it's the worst event, the other claiming it's the exact opposite. Personally, I don't care who is right or who is wrong, because we all have our own minds and can come to our own conclusions. I myself are in two minds over this event, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. As I said, I think the general idea is fantastic, but clearly Wargaming dropped the ball when they allowed for the 35 or 45 ingots, depending on your region, to be grabbed for getting those Brothers in Harms medals. Why do I say that? Well, simple reason being, is that it's had an effect on the game that has brought some of the worst aspects out in players. I've seen some truly awful gameplay, ranging from blocking players, holding back so they can kill steal, running away and letting the team do all the hard work when they have their two kills, a rise in toxicity, and players spamming those tiers they wouldn't normally touch, even if you paid them. The amount of super duper unicums with plus 30,000 battles currently rolling out in tier 4 is not something that happens every day. Yet these are the very same players who moan about low win rate players or inexperienced players rushing the tiers and spoiling tier X. Hate to tell you all, but you can't have the best of both worlds, guys. Throw into the mix a YouTuber then bragging about how they got the 50 TP in a couple of hours, not because both players in the tune had 70% win rates, but because they spammed tier 4. Because the higher tiers, interestingly, have too many toxic tunes like T22s and Progetto 46s. I must admit, the hypocrisy there made me spill my coffee somewhat. Ironically, they don't even realise realize that what they're saying is just ludicrous. It's a mix between hypocrisy and bravado. Although I failed to see any merit in any 70% win rate player with 50,000 battles plus bragging about their achievements in a tier that are designed for new players. But it takes all sorts to make the world turn. And that's really my point. In the search for views, we YouTubers sometimes do a great disservice to the actual game. Bragging to people that spamming a tier 4 for those BIAs sends out a really bad message. And I guarantee that very same person will do a video on awful or worse teams without batting an eyelid in a few weeks. They maybe even moan about too many 50 TPs out there in the hands of inexperienced players. Such is the nature of YouTube. It may seem that I have an issue with YouTubers, which I actually don't. They all may be lovely people in real life, I have absolutely no idea. However, as content creators, they should expect the messages that they send out to be looked at, critiqued, debated, and such. And rightly so, and not just by other content creators, but also by you, the audience. 
I used to think that we, World of Tanks Blitz content creators, had a kind of unwritten rule not to step on each other's toes and not to go after each other. And that was the case for quite a long time. Not so now, unfortunately. Now it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, or so it seems. That in itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. There's nothing like a bit of healthy competition. But I get back to terminology and words used in order to further agendas. I mean, let's take the example where one particularly successful white here claimed that only they could be trusted because of some daft birthday crate and that the official CCs, of which, by the way, I am one, are in the employ of the dreaded wargaming and therefore are somehow gagged. That one simple message was designed to stifle competition, rubbish other content creators and further that individual's agenda. Now, I have nothing against that as such, each to their own, I say. But in such instances, it should be expected that others will have the right to hit back, to speak their minds and to counter the statements made. <laughs> I myself did that and it got me into quite a lot of hot water. But here's the irony. It shows that despite being told I am untrustworthy, it proves that I do have my own mind and I am independent. The very things the message put out claimed that I, being an official CC, didn't actually have. My overall point being is that each of you have your own minds and you can therefore come to your own conclusions on a great many things. You don't need the likes of me to tell you what you yourself can work out just as easily. The Phase 1 crates is a grand example. Countless videos went out telling you the drop rate was insanely low in such. Like none of you were able to read such things and understand, understand such things for yourself. Or let's take another more recent video made by another content creator about getting credits. Now I fully accept and think it's a great message, especially for new players or those unsure about how the economics of Blitz actually works. And the video should have been advertised that way, rather than the clickbait that it was. Designed to make you think that there was some new and secret way to gain billions of credits, when in fact there isn't. The video itself contained perfectly sound advice. Although, if you ask my opinion, the easiest way to make credits is to avoid the top tiers like tier 10 and do more QTs. That's money for old rope. But that video advised, quite rightly, to use less premium ammunition, grab a cheap premium tank, get premium time, use the boosters that you have, and drive those birthday tanks when you can. With all the boosters loaded, by the way. This is all perfectly sound and good advice. So why does it have so many downvotes? Well, simple reason. People hate to be conned. They expect their content creators to be useful, trustworthy, and above all, honest. And sometimes, even though the message contained inside the video itself are all those things, clickbaiting your audience doesn't necessarily sit nicely with them. And that is why I don't say tanks OOB. Because I personally do not believe any tank is. I do think that there is one single tank in the game, that of the Kenny Otsu, that is broken. Because it really is broken for like real. Wargaming totally screwed up and they can't change it. But just because it's genuinely broken doesn't make it OP. Far, far, far from it, in fact. Now my approach has always been and will continue to be one that tries to avoid insulting your intelligence gives you an actual honest and open view, and above all, attempts to help those newer players where possible. Ironically, that's in the mind of most, or almost every YouTuber, deep down. It's just sometimes the waters get a little bit muddied in the quest for views and revenue. Anyway, I've been fooded. I just wanted to get that out there. I just wanted to explain a few things by all means, comment and everything below. And remember, guys, you know, everybody has an agenda. You yourself have your own minds. Come to your own conclusions on a lot of things. 
by all means, get out there and go around all the YouTubers and make an informed decision. Anyway, like I said, I've been Fuji. Until the next time, guys, stay safe, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.